Hey everyone, so as you know, Rise of the Ronin has released the same day as Dragon's Dogma 2. And in today's video, I'll be giving you my first impressions of the game after putting about 6 hours into it. This is by no means a full review since I have yet to beat the game. I'll be more focused on Team Ninja's game than making comparisons to Ghost of Tsushima. So with that out of the way, let's dive into it. Okay, so one of the things I really like when it comes to menu screens is the fact that more games are doing a menu somewhat like how it incorporates your character in it that you've customized. I know in Wolong they've done this, you know, God of War Ragnarok has also something like this as well, and Lords of the Fallen. I think it's always a nice touch, you know, attention to detail. You can see your character on the menu screen, not just like in-game while you're playing. You can actually make both female characters or both male characters if you wanted. You're not forced to make one of each gender. I was very surprised by in the beginning of the game when you're able to create your Veil Edge as well as your Blade Twin. It was a lot more in depth than I thought. You also have the ability to share your character that you created with other people or as well like if you want to use theirs. It was pretty cool to see how in depth. I tried not to spend too much time on it. Also you can see too I was able to like make my character have a big ass head which is an option but although in some of the cutscenes, it's not gonna always like show up that way from what i've noticed so that's always a plus yeah so you're able to customize your attire what you wear outside of the way that your character look as far as appearance is there's also transmog in this game too once you make it to yokohama when you get to the longhouse and unlock this here you'll be able to customize like this is the area where the historical figures that you come across and meet they will be here where you can like visit and spend time with them and strengthen your bond there's also different customization options here you have access to your storage here you can remodel have decorate this this place and then you can you know pass time repair your blade and this is where the transmog is that I was talking about. So yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But it should come to no surprise, as we've seen from other Team Ninja games like Wolong that had this as well, something similar. Now, for the story, I'm not gonna get too in depth here. I feel like I'm still earlier on, but you know, from checking how far I'm apparently into the story, I'm like one fourth way through. So far, I would say that it's nothing really memorable to me. And if you're familiar with Team Ninja games, primarily focus on gameplay and the combat. They're not really known for their story or their graphics. So there's that. And then I am also playing this on Twilight difficulty which is the hardest difficulty for those that want a more souls-like experience. Easy is for those that you know want to enjoy the story and then you have is it dust I believe is for intermediate and then obviously Twilight is hard mode. So while you're playing the game, you're going to come across different NPCs and some of them are based off of actual historical figures. In this game, you can form strengthen your bonds with them by either giving them gifts or doing certain missions that are tied. There's also different regions on the map that I'm gonna compare it to like Ubisoft games if you're familiar or more so like the Far Cry series where when you liberate an area, it's going to help further your relationship with the people, the locals there, essentially. I will say that the voice acting in this game isn't the greatest. I played it, I have it set to it being in English. I would have it in Japanese or perhaps another language if I wasn't streaming the game. I streamed it yesterday for about six, seven hours or so, give or take. It's easier for me to be able to read chat while I hear, you know, what they're saying in the game. Otherwise, I probably would have had it in <laughs> in Japanese instead. So your mileage may vary. I feel like if there's ever a time when you're playing a game and you don't like the English dubbing for it, yeah, just, just switch it to Japanese or whatever other language and you'll have a much better time. Graphically speaking, I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, this looks like, you know, PS3 graphics or worse. And to be honest with you, I feel like it's not the greatest 
greatest, but it's not horrible either when you look at it. I feel like the videos I've seen definitely doesn't do the game like justice. It's like when you play it or see it for yourself, the game isn't terrible. And I guess like for me personally, I'm not a graphic snob either when it comes to it. Yeah, I do want a game to look pretty, but is it everything? No, definitely not, right? To me, what's more important is the story and the combat, especially the gameplay. I think that's always been what I value the most in a game is the gameplay, the custom Customization. But if I can get, you know, a really interesting or compelling story, it, it hits all the right marks, right? As far as performance, I am playing this on performance mode. You have three different ones, prioritized FPS, prioritized graphics, and ray tracing. I didn't even know. Apparently this is a setting that you can have, but at least for this game, yeah, that's an option. I have it to prioritize FPS. That's what I care about the most. You can turn off motion blur. That's always on by default for whatever reason. <laughs> so, but yeah, I've, since playing this game, I haven't had any crashes, thankfully. The game has been running pretty smooth. I haven't really noticed any like noticeable frame drop while I've been playing the game. <laughs> I'm like playing Dragon's Dogma, you know, where you get to like the bigger city and stuff where you've noticed that it runs actually really good one of the things i will say i don't like is the item bloat that is usually seen in team ninja games although here i feel like it's a bit more organized but i feel like you're running around and you're looting stuff it can definitely it's annoying having to manage all of this but i believe you can filter it you can lock the items the ones that you want to keep you don't want to accidentally disassemble it or or sell it that is a thing also as well in this game which you know should come as no surprise the ui here like you can tell like try to make an effort at making it better it definitely takes some getting used to instead of you know just everything up here like cycling through it and then you have your inventory l3 you hit the analog stick and then you're able to see you know some of the other items and stuff here these are your consumables that you can use things to buff your weapons the usual stuff that you would see in you know souls like games and then for the exploration you have a prologue when you first play through the game like once you go through that you'll be able to like freely explore Japan you can go wherever it is so far it was from what it seems like I haven't been locked out of an area or anything like that. one thing too I will say that it's nice that I've seen more games do since Elden Ring is the markers so in this game you're able to place up to five markers and when you're there at that particular spot the marker will go away unless you're not exactly right on it then you know you'll manually have to remove it yourself so it's a really nice feature that they have instead of allowing you to have one marker I feel a lot of games should give you the ability to place more than just one with all the different stuff as you can see so this is how big the map is in here so the Veil Edge banner, these act as your fast travel points. So you, once you discover these, like say like this one right here, it's locked. So you can't fast travel to it. Or once you discover it, you'll be able to go to any of these and be able to fast travel to them, which is really nice. When you're riding around the horse, you don't have to be dead on it in order to gather the item. If you're within like close proximity or you kind of spam, I think is it the R1 button? If you're somewhat close, you'll, you'll be able to grab it while you're on the horse, which is nice because it's really annoying when games that you play make you, you know, have to get off the horse in order to gather items and whatnot. And there's also like different merchants in the game. This one right here is the Black Marketeer. There's a stable in the game too. You can, you know, customize like your horse. There's different benefits there. They can be faster. You can find different cats around. I will say that in a way it's 
Kind of like if you're familiar with any open world Ubisoft game, you know, you have your like markers and stuff around, but it's not as bad in my opinion. Like these, it normally doesn't show up until you explore the area and defeat like the bad guys there. Once you do that, it kind of reveals to you all the stuff that's located in that particular region that like you may have missed so then you can clear it. So here, like you see, I've I've already cleared out this area. So public orders are mini bosses that you can fight and then fugitives. I, I would consider all of that honestly mini bosses to me to fight in game which are really fun outside of bosses that you would fight during missions. And then while you're in town at any of these locations you may come across other ronins too that you can fight and from there you can learn weapons that they may have to can learn their combat style or further yeah further like level up your weapon proficiency. So I've been running primarily the Odachi and the Katana. That's what I went with. In the beginning, when you're done creating your character, there's gonna be a selection screen that you see of different ones. It's just like base stats. It doesn't typically matter at the end of the day, depending on obviously whatever weapon type it is that you choose. That's probably what you're gonna want to like focus on, but ultimately, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it matters as much so far at least to me. So I will say I saved the best for last. The best part about this game hands down which is again no surprise if you're a fan of Team Ninja is the gameplay the combat. I love the combat in this game. To me the combat is a mix between of Sekiro and more so Neo than it is to a lot of people say that you know it's like Ghost but mm, not quite because so for those that don't remember it was actually Neo 2 that came out back on March 12th before Ghost of Tsushima did in 2020. Because Neo, you know, uses stances and stuff as well. You know, there's different stances from low, mid, and high, I believe, if I remember correct. That's it's been a minute since I played that game. But yeah, so the stances in here are called combat styles. And as you progress, like when you first start out, there's only one for each weapon type that you have, and they may be either the same or completely different from one another. But as you play through the game, you learn more combat styles as well as your weapon proficiency for each one increases the more that you use it or fighting the the ronins as i was mentioning earlier there's there's surprisingly a lot of depth to the combat and i feel like i don't always do a really good job of articulating it the parry timing on this game they call it the counter spark is very tight and i don't know if the window is tighter the higher the difficulty that you may play on I've only been playing the game on twilight so i i can't i can't expand further on that but you know it's it's been super enjoyable the animations too the finishers the executions when you're able to like sneak up on an enemy with stealth and just backshot them as you continue to put more points into the different skills and stuff that you want there's ones where you can like rush an enemy down sprinting and be able to assassinate them it's been really fun playing between a combination of when you want to be aggressive or when you're trying to you know approach a mission or approach enemies using stealth and then for your skill tree for this i thought it was really interesting so you have your skill points and then you have your strength points dexterity charm and intellect so when you're going through and you're trying to like level this up some of these will take skill points as you can see while other ones like this one here this will take a strength Point in order to level it up. As you clear public orders or do missions in an area, you'll gain karma, which are, you know, any other Souls game, your runes, your ergo. When you die, you have to basically go back to whoever, whatever enemy that killed you, cover it when you fight them. And not only that, but the thing that was really nice that they've added to this game, and I don't remember whether or not if it was in Wolong, you're actually able to do item loadouts from your weapons to your sub weapons, like your bow or your rifle or pistol to your armors and items.
options, you can all set make it as a preset, which is pretty cool that I haven't seen. I guess last thing I want to talk about, some other complaints I do have about this game outside of the other stuff that I brought up. Outside of like the voice acting and the lip sync too and everything is off on the characters. The AI I feel like in this game is definitely hit or miss but it probably leans towards like the dumber side of things with like how they respond. You can definitely like exploit how far it is that they'll follow you. Especially you know when you're dealing with like a group of enemies or you know better in this game don't take them all on at once once, at least for me. I try to, you know, get them to separate and fight them one on one. But in other situations, there was there was one instance where I was trying to shoot a guy that was walking by a well and I end up shooting the well itself where he was standing right next to it. And this man didn't react or nothing at all. Like he did not get alerted. And I was like, what? There's been numerous of instances that are similar to that where it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's on some Ubisoft level type of AI here in the game. But outside of that, I've been having fun with the game regardless, you know. Again, the story isn't really hitting all that much like that to me yet. Definitely could change, you know, again, this is, you know, my impressions on the game. But the combat by far is, is the best part. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Y'all let me know what you think. If you made it to the end of this video, say something in the comments with backshot in it so I know you made it here. If you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. Take care.